Good morning. On this video, I want to read uh, The Law Rightly Dividing, The Word We Considered by James Knox. And he has the, a section here on justification before men. And uh, he's writing here, he writes here, This one seemingly great argument against what we have set forth in this paper is the case of Abraham's justification by works in James 2. He points out Old Testament salvation couldn't be with the law, couldn't be by works. And he has an extensive list explaining of that, of scriptures. And yeah, here's scriptures, Breaker. Many scriptures. There's this count, which you're saying, and from the New Testament, that no one can get saved by the law. The simple passage has been a bane to many a Bible student over the years. Many of those who hold the notion that men can earn heaven by good works not only point to this portion of scripture as proof, but will assault your, assault your character intelligence and reputation if you differ with them on their interpretation of a passage. One blood-washed brother in Christ was a member of the same body of which I am a member, denounced me from his pulpit, warned the students in his institute, well, Ruckman, to stay clear of me, I think it's Ruckman, uh, certainly from PBI, from his pulpit, warned the students in his institute to stay clear of me that I was stupid and don't know beans about the Bible, because they did not see these verses as proof of salvation by works in the Old Testament. You see how, you see how all PBI students are indoctrinated. All of them. And that's Robert Blake, Gene Kim, John Davis, Hoffman, Slater. Oh, I think it's Slater, Slater, Slater. All of them are indoctrinated. Brian Denver. He's not a PBI student, but. He absorbed this from uh, Brian Dengler, I mean, from, uh, 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 from Buckman. Uh, well, I may not, may, um, well, I may or may not be stupid, I may not know a great deal about the Bible, but I know how to run cross references and compare scripture with scripture before drawing any conclusions. So let's just g give that a try. James 2.17-24 through 24 says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. And he says, so the issue is not what a man has, but what he says he has. Then he goes on and quotes the scripture again. Show me the, thy faith without thy works. I will show thee my faith by my works. To which the writer answers, don't say it. Show me. It's a simple, simple thing. He's trying to say, what good is your faith if you're not showing it? Thou believest thou is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But, uh, but wilt thou know, O man, vain man, that without faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? And then again, he, he, uh, this is Knox's comment. God had declared Abraham righteous in Genesis 12 through 15. So what is this justification? What is this justification? It is a show me matter that a man who is justified in the eyes of God may also be justified in the eyes of men. These guys want to tell you that he, Abraham wasn't justified after receiving God's righteousness, which is impossible. Because that's what gets you justified. That's what gets you justified. Imputed righteousness. In every dispensation. God sees his own righteousness and says justified. He never sees he never sees your righteousness. He sees his own righteousness. See how they have to throw out theology? They have to throw out the entire realm of theology, everything they they they, they taught an understanding about justification, imputed righteousness, everything. They just throw it out for heresy. Seest, and he has comma, show me, thou how faith what with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Uh, print is complete. And the scripture was, was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Comma, imputed righteousness by faith, friendship by works. That's maturity. It's well, friendship by works. You see then, show me, how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. you got to show. You have to actually uh, produce works to show people. That's growth. Now, I would not dare stand up, against, uh, stand up as a private interpretation. Uh, now, I would not dare stand up uh, as a private interpretation, but w we will allow other scriptures to bear out the proof of this view. Of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, We hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that he might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 
So Jesus Christ never sinned, certainly did not need to be saved. Yet 1 Timothy 3.16 says, and Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up unto into glory. So the Lord Jesus Christ was justified. That is, he was declared righteous by those who observed his good works. And even as Abraham's faith was made perfect by his outward observable righteousness, so the word of God says of Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all of them that obey him. Hebrews 5, 9. In addition, return with me to the great prayer of David in Psalm 51 and look at the recorded words of the, uh, the recorded words of the Holy Ghost as touching God the Father. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou just, uh, judgest. Psalm 51 4. In like manner, think of these words from Luke 7 29. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptized with the baptism of John. Next time someone tells you that Abraham was saved by works and seeks to prove it with a trip to James 2, ask that man if God the Father and God the Son were saved by works. Nay, all three were righteous prior to the visible manifestation of that righteousness, which manifestation led observers to justify them, that is, you got a comma here, parenthesis, excuse me, that is, declare them righteous as well. It's a vindication, proof, that's all. And then to deal with their being saved in, in James 2. So this book, if you have any questions about this book, uh, you can read on that. Any points there? Says there are many people in here. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. On page 264, he points out, How is it that otherwise sound Bible teachers are convincing otherwise sound Bible students that men before Christ were saved through the Levitical offerings and animal sacrifices when the Word of God says that such exercise could not possibly take away anyone's sins? And if salvation in Old Testament times came by keeping the law, then God certainly played a cruel joke on those men and women, for he gave them a way of salvation through which they could never be saved. Preposterous. So... That's what you know, these guys want you to believe. Oh, I'm just teaching the Bible. No, he's teaching a lie. But as, as, as uh, Knox points out, they set up a false view, they set the idea of cliche, that the people in the Old Testament were, were that uh, many, you know, Baptist ministers might be saying, saying the cliche, they look forward to the cross. Dispensations understand that's a cliche, that they understand the different Gospels, and, the, and many of the you know, people saved right, did not understand the cross. They were saved by believing what God told them to believe. But they set up a false cliche and then encountered with a false view with the idea, well, they had to be saved by keeping the law then, or keeping, um, doing works. So they, they, they counter a false view, which is a simple cliche, uh, a non-dispensational one, with a, a false view, Another false view, which says, "Well, that cliche is wrong. They won't look for. They didn't look. For, the the, uh, the Old Testament saints weren't looking forward to the cross. With the idea that, well, since they weren't looking forward to the cross, they had to be saved by the law and or keeping work, doing works. And both are wrong. Both are wrong. And he says, that's, that's what Knox says. You don't you don't counter one one wrong something wrong with something else wrong." We know the Old Testament saints weren't looking forward to the cross in the sense that they understood the cross, understood that Jesus Christ was who Jesus Christ was and his Messiah, although it was it's in there, the Old Testament. But many guys in the fundamentalist movement basically would just use that as a simplified way of explaining uh, how the Old Testament saints were saved by faith alone. And they would just use that, well, they were looking forward to the cross. 
God was looking forward to the cross. That's the important thing. And they were saved by faith alone. But many of these guys would be just misstating it and not understanding, as, as Scofield would have, different gospels, kingdom gospel and things like that, that they had con different content. Up popped Ruckman and says, well, that cliche is wrong. They weren't looking forward to the cross. I'm going to counter that cliche with something more absurd, that he, they could be saved by the law or works. And then I'm going to put up a lot of bunch of baloney about James 2 and Ezekiel 18. And every time I see someone die in the Old Testament, they had to go to hell. They, bring, they think Saul, King Saul, went to hell. Even though Samuel said that today, Saul and his sons would be with him. Jonathan, you tell me Jonathan wasn't saved? So he wants you to believe. So I'll stop with this up. Take any questions. It's unfortunate this has to be a battleground. Because the view is so absurd as that it shouldn't be argued about. But the PBI guys coming out are so indoctrinated and so rigid in their thinking and so, and so uh, contemptuous of anybody who disagrees with them and so, so uh, uh, blind to the truth that they're leading many people astray by putting up this nonsense. You understand, the consequences are that someone, no, no one can be saved in the law. It contradicts clear New Testament scripture. They said no one could be saved by the law. They just ignore the inconsistencies. Just like people would say, people would say the New Te Old Testament was saved by looking forward to the cross. Too many inconsistencies there. Because clearly the apostles weren't looking forward to, forward to the crucifixion and the resurrection. They didn't understand what was happening there. But they were saved men. Eleven of them were. They were saved under a kingdom gospel. They were looking for a, a, a conquering Messiah. Not a suffering one. So you don't count to an error with another error. And that's what these guys have done. But the, the dogmatism of these guys is, is just unbelievable. And they want the scripture, and that's what really bothers you about is because they rest the scriptures and ignore. See, look, I, I got scriptures, and it gives you a whole bunch of scriptures like Calvinists do. Like <laughs> the Calvinists do. The Calvinists give you all kinds of scriptures. People reject eternal security. Oh, they get all kinds of shit. Here's a whole bunch of things. You can lose this, lose that. Lose that. People always have scripture to defend heresies. And then, then, then they, they, you know, they say, oh, so look at it. Look at the scriptures I've got. The rest of that context, ignoring other scriptures, that clear scriptures. Clear, clear scripture always interprets more obscure scripture. You think you had to run to Ezekiel 18 before you see Faith and works. That's what they want to believe it. So all of the entire th uh, uh, Bible, Old Testament, you can't find you can't find faith and works until Ezekiel eighteen or Ezekiel three. Where do you want to put it? Ezekiel. <laughs> See, that's the destruction of the land. It had nothing to do with anybody eternal salvation. But that's how they rest things out of concepts. They know that what the book is we're actually te uh, teaching, the context of the book. And of course, Bob Breaker goes on for his own and starts teaching Exodus 18 and 20. He says, it works, works, work, walk. <laughs> it says beginning walk, the walk and works. That's what all the law was given for, their walk, to show their faith. That's all it's for. Because you can't get saved by the law. You never could get saved by the law. New Testament makes it clear. The law was only made up to show you need a savior. Because no matter how well you did, you're always disobeying the law somehow. And the law was set up to make sure there's no loopholes. <laughs> no loopholes in there. Because guys are always trying to find loopholes. Well, I, you know, I didn't, didn't, no, you didn't do that. And the, and the Lord came, he says, now we'll go by heart. We'll go by heart. So, now you have no, no loopholes because basically it's what your intentions were. So even if you're outwardly keeping the law, God knew your heart. Like the young, rich young ruler. So he comes up and says, what must I do have eternal life? And the Lord just takes him right down the path and says, well, okay, sell everything, follow me. The Lord knew his heart. He was covetous. He couldn't give up his goods. Those goods owned him. 
So don't let these guys deceive you. They set, they set up a, uh, an issue of a, a phony cliche based on probably a lot of people in the old, you know Baptist churches, whatever, who tried to simplify Old Testament salvation and said they were looking forward to the cause. Not really expounding on it. Just po pointing out that, yeah, they're looking forward to the cause in some way. Well, some way they were. But they understand the details. And that's really, you know, the real issue. They weren't told they had to believe, like we do, in the historical death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That those are, you know, the, those are historical facts, historical reality. Now we look back and see who, the details. But the real issue is God was looking forward to the course, and therefore on the basis of that he could cover their sins in order to, uh, and, and forgive them. But the sins weren't remitted until the course and the shed blood. So before that, they had different content to their salvation. When God told me you had to believe this. If you believe this, you're eternally saved and, uh, and you get imputed righteousness, be justified because I see my own righteousness, and be regenerated. You get a new heart. Not two natures. So they make a big deal. Well, they didn't see two natures. Yeah, we know they didn't see two natures. That's why the soul would often be considered part of the body. And the idea of the soul dying meant the body, the physical death. Even Muckman teaches that. Every time I see the soul die, the soul die. It's not talking about spiritual death in, in the context. A lot of times it's just talking about physical death. Because the soul when the body were tied together, linked together, that would be associated with physical death. Context will tell you. These guys want to deal with context. All of a sudden, they throw out context. What they do is constant, constantly just repeat the things over and over again and try to beat you down. Well, what about Ezekiel 18? <laughs> if the righteous man turns from his righteousness, his righteousness will be, forget, you know, will, will, will be forgotten. And a wicked man, if he turns from his wickedness, is, you know, his wickedness will be forgotten, he'll be considered righteous. It has to do with surviving physical life and doing, uh, dealing with uh, eternal life. Context. So I'll stop with this up and uh, we can deal with that. But don't let these guys deceive you. And be not, be not, and, 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 and uh, make no mistake about it. You read Gene Kim's book, it's all deception. He knows about James Knox, James, or James Knox and he purposely twists it. In his, in his book, Ruckman, Ruckman Ruckus, where he goes about the Old Testament salvation. I've done videos on that. And he twists what James Knox says about justification, because he has to. So it's deceit, Bhavav, here, people. It's not just error, it's deliberate deceit, a refusal to see the truth and to deceive people on what the truth is. Because they, they're locked into a, a particular paradigm. And it's based on one issue. Because they believe if you teach faith alone in every dispensation, then in the tribulation, people will take the mark because they believe they have eternal security. Ignoring everything that God says, don't take the mark. This is what they believe. What can taught this? This is what the whole thing started from. They'll take them all, they take the mark. They don't have eternal security. No one in the Old Testament has eternal security. People in the tribulation won't have eternal security because anyone takes the mark. So they'll take the mark based because they believe in faith alone, a New Testament salvation con uh, uh, you know, con conception, and the idea of uh, having eternal security. Our eternal security is different. Was sealed in union with Christ. Their eternal security was based on the promises of God. That's John ten. John ten is not dealing with church. Jesus says, "He held me in the palm of my hand." The Father held me in the palm of my hand. It had nothing to do with uh, when he held the Father uh, palm of the Father's hand or in the palm of uh, uh, Jesus' hand or part of his body. But the fact is, is that their thing is: see, if we do this, if we teach, if if people like us, you know, the faith alone people, teach this, the tribulational people are going to see what we've we've written or put videos up, and they say, "Whoa, we have eternal security." So we're going. It's a point that teaches this. 
So we'll go take that mark in order to feed our families. And then we'll be shocked because they'll, they'll be shocked because they, they, they were in hell. Oh, we thought we had some security based on faith alone. This is their reasoning. This is where it's coming from. This is it. It all started with, it starts with tri the tribulation and works work backwards. That if you teach eternal security for the entire dispensations, then the people in the tribulation will think they have eternal security and take the mark and be damned. So we are preaching a terrible heresy that are going to lead people in the tribulation to damnation. They're trying to protect the people in the tribulation by telling them faith works. This is how serious these people are about this. This is not a minor issue. According to them, we're leading the people, we're going to lead people into tri tribulation, leading them falsely, thinking they have, they have eternal security, because only the church age had eternal security. And so the people in the tribulation will say, oh, I can take the mark now, because I'm eternally saved, and therefore I'll, I'll take the mark. That's what Brian Daniel teaches, this is what they all teach. This what, and Buckman taught this, and that's what the whole thing started. And then they eventually, they had, starting from that, they had to work their way back into the Old Testament, since the really tribulation is really just a, a continuation of the Old Testament, Daniel 73. So know where it's coming from. And what they really think of us, who teach faith alone in every dispensation, that we're damning people in tri to tribulation to go to hell. Because the person would say, oh, I have to buy and sell this to protect my family. I'd be worse than an infidel if I didn't, if I didn't do that. So oh, I'm going to take the mark. No one think you know the guy thinking I have a general security when of course the guy you know anyone takes the mark is, is uh, you know is gone. But they're, interesting enough, they're the guys who keep saying they can remove the mark somehow. You know Gene Kim and and, and uh, uh, Breaker, they're the ones that, and uh, even Ruckman, they was one they they they're the ones that talk about taking the mark, removing the mark somehow. We never talk about removing the mark. We say if you take the mark, you can. We say they won't take the mark because they won't be deceived. But they're the ones who come like, oh yeah, you you know, what well, we'll break up there. I think a lot of people will be cutting their right hand off, you know. So bizarre. So they're the ones talking about, you know, uh, 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 people trying to get out of taking, you know, who take the mark getting out of losing their salvation by some absurd action, cutting the tops of the heads off or something. <laughs> that stupid thing. But that nowhere it comes from. So I just wanted to read you that and explain that that's the issue. That's what these guys won't explain to you. That's how serious this battle is, this, this, this theological issue is, so serious they take it, they try to downplay it, but in fact, they're attacking the very core of dispensationalism. Dispensational theology is, is the idea there's a unity to that, and unity, of course, is always faith alone. There's a unity. Covenant theologians have always attacked the, uh, the dispensation by saying we we had a, 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 a broken up theology. It was, it, it was, it was not, there was a unity to it. Because we would say different different gospels, but it was always it's always unified by what one thread, faith alone, and by grace. That unifies all the dispensations. So if you take that away, then then you've got then you've got a, a broken up plan. And God's plan is very consistent. While the content of the gospel may change, the method is always the same. The means of salvation is always the same by faith alone through grace. And the uh, how a person is always saved is always based on the work of the cross, what Christ did on the cross, applied to the Old Testament uh, retroactively, and then of course uh, applied to the um, new believers in the New Testament. And different things happen in New, in new Testament believers because of their position in Christ as church age believers. We know things are different in the church age for individual believers as opposed to Old Testament believers. But eternal security is not one of them. It's the method of how eternal security occurs. And so when you see that, you know, oh Lord, you know, but Psalm 51, take that the you know, the Holy Spirit from me. So they know but they know the Holy Spirit was given to only particular individuals for particular reasons. They know that. They kinda con you. They're hoping you know check and know you know what they actually said. Locking, locking these guys. They always thought that the Old Testament salvation, Old Testament, uh, uh, the Old Te the Old Holy Spirit indwelt individual believers for particular reasons. Nothing to do with their salvation. It had to deal with their function, what they were going to perform in in, in the Old Testament, so it could come and go.
he could come and go. So stop, put this up. Amen. Thank you.